Hello everyone, it's the Farm Sim Guy here. Hope you're all doing well. Course play. Now, I haven't done a beginner's guide to course play right up until now. And the reason for that, I think, is because probably in the first 12 months of development, course play changed a lot. There was a lot of different updates. It wasn't in the mod hub. Now we're at version 7.2 point whatever the number is at the moment. We have a stable version. It's in the mod hub. People can download it. We're most of us should be on very similar versions now so i thought now would be the ideal time to first and foremost take a look at a beginner's guide a bit of a, an all-round guide to course play in its uh, simplest form really i i would suggest that maybe 70 to 80 percent of us who will play the game who don't use course play at the moment probably just want to know the basics and to be honest even if you know these few simple things, you will find all the pleasure and joy that comes from course play compared to the base game helpers. And then you may want to develop your knowledge of course play further and learn some of the more technical courses. I have already done a couple of videos on some of the more technical aspects of course play, but actually, even if you don't ever want to learn them, knowing the basics can really, really help the efficiency of your game. So we're going to jump in today. I'm going to give you a bit of an overview of the, the basic settings get you up and running in a very few clicks actually um, and that should help you in probably the majority of the, the work you do with course play so without further ado let's jump in and have a quick look at how we can get started with course play in the easiest possible manner so I'm going to jump into my Fent here now as you'll see the menu at the bottom there pops up straight away. Now, I have clicked my middle mouse button to move that about. I've clicked my middle mouse button again and it moves back to its usual process of moving around the vehicle. Now, I've clicked on my middle mouse button again and I am moving that display around. I also press my delete button and that gets rid of it. Now, you may have it looking a little bit differently. You may have this you see that there that's game pad friendly hud now you of course can use this if you want um if you use the game pad on your pc i don't i like to use the little pop-up uh, one at the bottom a little bit more control over it um what you do need to do with this is do things slightly differently so for the purposes of this video i'm going to suggest that you jump in here you go down to your menu here, this CP menu with the cogs on it, and you turn off gamepad friendly HUD deactivated. There we go. Now, if you come back to here and hit the delete button, it brings up the small HUD at the bottom there. Now, once we know that, we're gonna just move this vehicle around to the start of a field. And I'm going to show you the quickest way to get started with course play. If you want to watch nothing else other than this in this video, you will be able to farm your fields using course play by the end of it. It is that simple. Now, there's two ways to get into course play. One is to hit your escape button. And you can use the steering wheel here, which you would use for the in-game helpers as well but you've got an option within this. So if you click create job as you would with an in-game helper, um, you have options here. Field work is the in-game helper. Go to is the in-game helper. CP field work, course play field work, is your course play helper. Now you can see already we have a white line around the field here that's selected the field that we want to be in. We are close to it. Look, if you see where we are now, we are very close to the edge of the field and it's detected that and it has given us that border around that field. So we're going to say open close course generator here and it brings up this menu. So let's go through these options just so you know what each of them is. Work width is the width of the tool that you are towing behind your tractor. Now, I think I have counted only twice um, since I've used course plane 22 um, a vehicle that has the wrong width attached I think there's one combine that does it 
uh, and there's a set of rollers that I've used that, that do it. Other than that, it has been almost foolproof in terms of detecting the working width of the implement that you are towing or the header you have in your combine or whatever it is. So trust that. You can adjust it if you want to. I think I've done it, like I said, once or twice uh, when I've noticed there's been an issue. Multiple tools. Now, I'm not going to cover multiple tool courses in this video. I will do another one separately on that because once you get into that, you can have a whole heap of fun. But for the purposes of this and as a beginner's video, which is what this is, we're just going to set you up with the easiest course play courses you can get so you can run them as quickly and as efficiently as you can. Number of headlands. Now, this is an important one. Um, I would say 99% of the time when course play goes wrong, it's because the course hasn't been set up properly. It is a really, really efficient tool, this, and it's a really clever tool. But if you don't set the course up to help you, you can have issues. Auto drive, on the other hand, can have hissy fits and go off and do its own thing. Course play, I would say, is a lot more reliable if you set up your course properly. And one of the ways to make sure your course is set up to the best it can be is to be very careful about how you use your headlands. So um, we're using a pretty basic square field here, so it's not much of an issue. But um, if you think you've got um, obstacles at the edges of the field and things like that, put more headlands in. What you want to give your vehicle the biggest opportunity to do is to be able to turn in the field. Um, and if you've only got one headland or you've only got two headlands on a narrow implement, there is just not enough space there and they'll end up getting snarled up in trees or they'll end up falling in a ditch or running into a fence or whatever. So headlands are key. Now, for the purposes of this vid, we've got a wide open field, so I'm going to put one in. But wherever you are, when you're thinking about putting your headlands in, whatever you think you want to do, my suggestion would be just add another one in. It, at the end of the day, it doesn't make a difference, but it can help considerably uh, when the vehicle gets to the end of the rows. Now you have the option to start working on your headlands or the center of your field. Again, depending on what you're doing, you can choose to do it different ways. Obviously, something like combining, you would get rid of your headlands first, but something like bailing, you might want to leave your headlands to the end so you don't have bales sitting on the outside of the field that your tractor can crash into. So depending on what you're doing, you can choose the option to do here. Most of the time, I leave it on headlands only. So there's specific tasks that may you may need to do it another way around. Uh, but uh, windrowing is another one. Um, if you do your headlands first with a windrow and then you're going up and down the field, you can make a mess of the, uh, the headlands so if you do the headlands at the end, it leaves them nice and neat and tidy when you go in and do your next, next task. But invariably, you probably want to leave it on headlands. But again, experiment. You know, I'm, I'm not saying this is the way you have to do it. So by all means, have a play around. If you want to try it and use it a different way, by all means, you can do that. Next one down is headland corners. Now, smooth will give you a nice smooth curve on the corners. Um, it's a very good way of particularly on uh, fields that have got uh, a, a non-uniform edge. You've got a very funny shaped field. I'm thinking, you know, Edgewater, Saskatchewan, and places like that where the fields are really oddly shaped. A lot of British maps where the fields aren't big square fields. Uh, smooth uh, edges is very, very good. But I will, uh, I will say on square fields, it may miss some of the uh, crop out or some of the ground out. So... Be mindful of that. Your other option is sharp, where it will try and do square corners to the best of its ability. Uh, it does work pretty well, um, so give that one a go as well. Again, bear in mind the type of field it is and if there's any obstacles around it, because it might be better to do smooth corners and go and fix the edges at the end if there's a lot of trees and things surrounding the edge of the field. So bear that in mind. Round corners is probably very similar to smooth corners in the best way to describe it, but they will they will round off the edge of the field. So again, if you've got a square field like this, you will start to see the edges being chopped off and left. Uh, so you may need to go around and fix them in. But again, sometimes it can be beneficial to run them like that. So there you go. We're going to leave it on smooth for this uh, example, and you'll be able to hopefully see just at the edge of the field that issue. Um, headland direction. This is 
basically what it says on the tin here. You can choose which direction you want to go around your field. I tend to leave this on clockwise the majority of the time, um, predominantly because um, the combine pipe is on usually on the left-hand side. So if you're going clockwise around the field, the combine pipe is out uh, and can unload on a headland for you. Um, sometimes, and again, it depends on the job you're doing, uh, but a windrower, for example, um, if you've got an offset windrower, it may throw grass into the the edge of the field rather than into the middle of the field if you go clockwise. So you may want to run anti-clockwise for your headlands if you're doing windrowing with an offset uh, tool. So again, one to consider there. Headland overlap here. The, basically on the headlands, you're overlapping your, your rows ever so slightly, just again to help you on those corners and, and to stop you avoiding any of your crop on the turns. So uh, you can up that as much as you want. I tend to leave it on the 7% that is there. I don't tend to play with it much, but you can go up to 25% if you really, really want to. Obviously, the more you overlap, the less efficient it is because you're running over ground you've already treated. Um, so bear that in mind. Um, scrolling down a little bit further, field center. Now there's a few options here. Up and down is your traditional. It gets to the end of a row, it turns around and it goes back the other way. Um, probably the one I use the most, but um, there are certain vehicles and certain tools where you would want to potentially look at other options. Uh, we'll look at all of them here so you can see them. Um, the next one is spiral. Um, and that is where the tractor, in essence, goes around the field in a spiral motion. Uh, again, we'll demo that. Uh, racetrack, again, similar style, where it will drive uh, a course around the field in circles rather than uh, going up and down. And lands. Now, lands is one that I would say is specifically for combines. And in essence, what that does is split the field up into sections so that... The majority of the time, and I say the majority of the time because sometimes if it's a very long field, a combine can fill its hopper before it's made one pass uh, down a field. But um, the aim of lands is really to make sure that at all times the combine's auger pipe is uh, on the left-hand side and available uh, so that a vehicle that's coming to pick it up, might call, be that uh, an auger wagon or a truck doesn't have to drive through crop to get to it. So it's always on the exposed side of the field after the after the field's been cut, which is quite handy, uh, I have to say. And then after that, you're back down to up and down. So I'm going to leave it on up and down here. Now, you'll notice, I'll, I'll touch on this, other than changing the number of headlands, I've changed nothing else at the moment, and that's the way we're going to keep it, to be honest. Um, up and down row direction. This uh, just allows you to select the longest edge if you want to. Uh, if you leave it on automatic, invariably it will do that. Right, I've just turned the clicking off because it was starting to do my head in. I reset some stuff today and the sound stayed on. So, finally, a little bit quieter. Sorry, if that was annoying you, I apologize. So, up and down rows, automatic. Um, it will generally set it to the longest edge. Now, you may find on funny-shaped fields or odd-shaped fields that it will do a diagonal. Um, it will always try and find the longest, most efficient uh, passes, so it's not doing lots and lots of short passes and lots of turns. Uh, you can uh, set it to longest edge, force it to find the longest edge if you want to do it that way. Uh, the other way is manual. I'll come back to manual in just a little minute. Uh, most of the time, I leave it on automatic. Next up is rows to skip. Now, rows to skip is an interesting one. Um, again, tends to be for bigger fields and bigger equipment. So if you can imagine you're towing an 850 uh, Cedar and an air cart, a John Deere 850 Cedar and an air cart, and you're getting to the end of the row, for that to turn around and head back down the very next row in the field, it's having to turn incredibly tightly to do that. And you can get snarled up and you can get tires wrapped up in the vehicle and stuff like that. Skip rows allows you to skip a row in essence. So it doesn't go to the next one. It goes to the next but one after that. And you can go up to six skip rows before it, uh, it runs out of options. But, um, it's well worth doing that with uh, large equipment because what it'll do, it'll still do the entire field, but it will do it 
every sixth row and then it'll come back and do the one the first one it's missed and then the next one and the next one until it's finished the field so very handy one to have that definitely one to consider when you're using large machinery uh, rows per land now if you, we go back up to here and we did lands up here so this in essence is telling you how many rows it's going to skip before it cuts in for the land i tend to leave it on six it's pretty handy to leave it on six but you can adjust that as well right up to 24 if you want so depending on the size of the field you may want to do more or less um this only uh, it only looks at this if you're on lands mode if you're on up and down or normal mode it will ignore that uh, i tend to leave it on six as well um, and then your up down row angle again if you've set this to manual here your up and down row angle uh, is a way you can adjust the angle that it cuts across the field so you have the option there to set any angle you want uh, i'm not sure I know anybody that's ever used that from all the people I've spoken to about course play. So um, automatic tends to sort a lot of this out for you. Now the final two in here, island bypass mode. Think if you've got trees in the middle of fields, you've got telegraph or you've got power lines in the middle of fields. Hopefully when you have circle set on here, it will draw a circle around those and avoid those when it's working on them. Now there is an element of the map maker requiring to set the map up properly for that to work. I've seen the majority of maps, if they have things like power lines in the middle of the field, they have been set up uh, with an island bypass mode on. So you've got a couple of options. You've got simple, you've got no bypass at all. Um, the only way you would ever do that is if you knew there were no collisions on whatever it is in the field, otherwise it's gonna crash into it. Well, you've got circle i tend to leave on circle and um, tend to have very few issues and finally field margin now field margin is an interesting one because uh, it allows you to adjust and bring in or or stretch out the edge of the field so for example if you go uh, into negative it actually overlaps wider than the field if you go to positive it will actually go inside the field so um Bear that in mind if you've got, for example, a row of trees right, right, right on the edge of the field. You may want to bring in the edge of the field, the margin of the field, ever so slightly to give yourself a bit more scope to avoid crashing into those trees and getting snarled up in them. Um, but I would say nine times out of ten, or even 99 times out of 100, just leaving the field margin as it is, should do you no problems at all. So, I know I've run through all of those and that's taken a little bit of time, but let's get started now. Now, like I said, the only thing that I have changed from the default settings on here is the number of headlands. And you may find that a lot of the time that is all you need to do. Of course, play around with it, but if you just want to get in, get some efficient course play going, set your number of headlands and go from there. So, we've done that. And now what we need to do is click generate fieldwork course at the bottom here so let's do that now um, you can go back from here and once you've course is generated you can go back and you can see it on the mini map there so um, you can start the job from in here if you want to i wouldn't recommend that uh, although you can if you want make sure you're always set to first waypoint here but my advice would be to come out back to your tractor now if we zoom out here you can see that the course is showing up on the field there and again if we pull up the tool here this uh, eye icon here if you click through this you can remove it altogether you can show your start and your end points you can show the next i think it's 30 uh 30 nodes that it's got on the field certainly it shows you basically where it's going to go next uh, based on where it is in the field uh, or it can show you the entire course, which is what we've got there. So I have got this set on a classic up and down rows course. So what we're going to do is make sure, again, it's set to the uh, first waypoint, because we're starting at the beginning of the field here. Um, working with, you can adjust through here if you want to. So if you spot something's not working in the field, you can, uh, you can tweak your working with slightly and your tool offset again for the purpose of this we don't need to worry about it but um, with all of that said first waypoint we can turn off uh, in fact I'm going to leave the course on here but again if you want to you can just hit the go button um, 
and uh, that course it will follow that course but just because we're doing a bit of tutorial here let's turn that full course on um, first waypoint and all you need to do is hit this button here the play button now you'll see what happens is it unfolds the tractor or the implement drops it down and it will roll into position I'm just going to close this here and it starts so off it goes now we're going to follow this round because I want you to see some of these different courses when I finish this course this is your standard type of course when this is finished we will reset this field and I'll show you spiral and racetrack as well I'm just going to interrupt here as we uh, finish our last row. Do you see how far it's reversing there? And again, it will do it when it comes round and lines itself up here. This is a brilliant example of how having more headlands will help you because what it's trying to do is find itself enough space to line itself up appropriately before it uh, starts its row. Now, it's very difficult because there's a small field, but if you imagine on a much larger field than this, um, you would have three, maybe four headlands uh, it won't need to, to do that reverse it will basically just do a loop and line itself up and get itself ready for the next pass uh, which will speed things up immeasurably so uh, back to my point earlier more headlands the better where you can get away with it but he's coming up to the end here now also you can see at the edge of the field here uh, where it's missed certain edges that is because we are on smooth corners which obviously does a smooth turn on the field but can miss crops so there you go field is done now we're going to reset the field here and we're going to go again and i'm going to show you spiral and i'm going to show you racetrack right we are good to go again i just want to point out where you've got the name of your tractor here that will take you to your that your vehicle settings actually so if you click on that it will open the vehicle settings menu in here and there's lots and lots of different things in it like i said the majority of the time you don't need or want to touch these um but you can adjust your speeds here you can adjust when you raise and lower the tools there's lots of things to play around with the hint but invariably you tend to not need to uh touch these um they are set pretty well to start with the only thing that might annoy you and it's one that does bug me a lot of the times open hud with mouse activated now that basically means as well as your delete button which i'm using there your right mouse button can make it appear doesn't make it disappear can make it appear um and for me that that uh, that is quite frustrating so i tend to deactivate that one as well right we're back in our tractor here we want to just set up our new course so very simply hit the escape button we want to go to create job Horse play field work. Now you can see it's not picked up the border of the field here. So I want to just click field position over the tractor. Um, and there you go, it's picked up that white line again. So we can open our course play generator here. We're going to go down this time instead of up and downs. We're going to do spiral. Everything else we're going to leave the same. We're going to click generate field work course. And I'm just going to show you the difference between the course we just did and this one. So this is spiral. So we'll go back out of here, we cancel, we go back again. And we bring up our HUD here, make sure we're on first waypoint. And we kick go. And there you have it 
That's the spiral course. I think probably ever so slightly faster than the up and down on a small field like this. We still have the issue of these uh, rounded edges because we left them on smooth. Um, so what I might do for the next one, which is a racetrack, I'm going to switch the edges so you can see you can see those three edges where the crop is still there. We'll switch those for racetrack to uh, sharp edges so you can see how it handles corners in a different way as well. So let's reset this field. Let's go again. Now up until now we've been using this field here, this little field here. I've actually decided to flip things around a bit. This is a slightly bigger field and I think a slightly bigger field might just give us a better idea of how race uh, track works. So we'll set this up and then we'll demo it. But all we're going to do is everything we've done the same up until now. So we go into here, we're on field 140 up here now. We're going to do create job. Um, as you can see, it's looking down here for our target position. So let's move that up to here. And we're going to put our field position up here too. By just clicking on those two targets, selected our field there. So way back at the start of the video, I said sometimes it won't. If it doesn't pick up the boundary, you can set it using field position there. Now we're going to open, close, course generator. We're going to put one headland on. Uh, we're going to do sharp corners because I want you to see sharp corners and how they work. We're on racetrack already. Automatic up down. Everything else is as you were. So let's generate our course there. Uh, and we'll just go back and just, you can see it there. Cancel that. Go back. So there is our course. So you can watch it. And uh, I think from here, we're just going to hit the button and see what happens. So go into first waypoint. Let's go, it's unfolding, and we are off. There we go. Um, I think it's safe to say that was not the quickest. I know we had uh, sharp corners on there to show you what that looked like, but there was a lot of running over the same stuff as well. So again, hopefully that gives you a feel for potentially what the right type of course and the way to run it is um, for you and the way you play the game. Now, I was going to show you a little bit more. I was going to do some combine stuff as well, but I'm very conscious this video is getting quite long already. So. Um, I probably showed you enough here and we will come back very quickly with another video. One final thing though I do want to show you is how to save your course. So if you want this course here to be saved for future reference when you come back next year and need to uh, cultivate it again, rather than starting from scratch, you can load the course in. So what we'll do just very quickly is show you how to do that. Right. We're in the menus here. You can see field 140 where we've just been is there with the course on it. And now we want to go into here where these three map icons are. Let's click on that. Now you'll see here, course play manager 1151 MT, which is the tractor temporary course. Now, if you were to quit the game and load back in, it may not be there still. So what you want to do is save this. Now we know we are on field. Let's just go back and check. We are on field 140. Uh, so what you need to do in FS22 is save the course, but to do that, you need to create a folder. And I quite like the way it does this. So this will be our field 140. Now you can save obviously as many courses as you want 
within the field. So you could have a combine course, you could have a baler course, you could have a windrow course, you could have your cultivator course. So once you've got your field uh, 140 folder selected there, you can click on save course. Now nothing happens, that's kind of weird there, but then this activate button pops up here, so you can click on that and you can call that cultivator. There we go. Hit OK. Now within field 140, you've got your cultivator. Now, just to show you, create another folder here, field 139, let's say that. Hit OK. Now I've selected, it selects that automatically for you, but there's no courses in there. If I click on field 140, there's our cultivator course that we've just selected. So you would then just click on that and load that course um, if you wanted to. So that's how you save a course. Now, at the same time, if you want to get rid of an existing course, you want to move on to another field and you want to get rid of this course here, you maybe saw it just then, but you can clear current course and it will remove the course from inside the tractor. Now, because we saved that in here as cultivator, we can actually go back in there, click load and activate and that course is back. So pretty straightforward there. So there you go. That was supposed to be a quick, easy to do uh, intro to course play. As you can see, there's a lot to it, but hopefully I've walked through it in a manner that makes it uh, clear and simple to understand. Of course, if you've got any questions, pop them in the comments below and I will try and answer them in future videos. There's going to be a few more of these coming out. Like I said, combines and the way uh, course play interacts with combines is quite specific compared to a lot of the other stuff. So um, it's worth spending a bit of time on that separately. But um, if you enjoyed this, please leave a like, hit the sub if you're new, and hopefully I can bring you more of this in the future. For now, happy course playing. That's a thing. And I'll see you again very soon. Take care. Bye for now.